Hi, I'm Jethro Aykroyd. I led the team at CMCL Innovations that implemented the knowledge graph based aspects of the Credo Digital Twin. It's my pleasure to demonstrate the visualization that we've created to allow people to explore the data produced by the Digital Twin. The visualization is map based and can be accessed using any standard web browser. So, zooming in. The digital twin contains information about assets from the communication, water, and power networks. The locations of the assets from each network can be plotted on the map, along with the logical connectivity between the assets. And at this point, I should emphasize that whilst the digital twin was developed using real asset data, what you can see in this demonstration is synthetic data. The synthetic data were created to share the same characteristics as the real data. So the same types of assets and the same patterns of connectivity. However, the names and locations of the assets and the connections between them and the synthetic data are entirely fictional. What you can see on screen at the moment in many ways resembles the data structure of the knowledge graph that forms the basis of the digital twin. The assets in the digital twin are represented as nodes in the knowledge graph, while the connections between the assets are represented as directed edges in the knowledge graph. This is well suited to representing arbitrarily structured data, such as the connections that arise between the assets. Underlying the knowledge graph is a hierarchy of ontologies. At the top of the hierarchy is a core asset ontology that we use to define generic concepts for assets and connections between assets. Underlying this, we then have domain ontologies that define specializations of these concepts for each of the communication, water, and power networks. So the details of the types of assets in each network are defined by the domain ontologies, whereas the business logic of the digital twin, so in other words, the code that performs the analyses by operating on the data is written as far as possible in terms of the higher level core asset ontology. This design confers several advantages. Firstly, it provides abstraction. So the ability to define the business logic in terms of the core and asset ontology is the basis of how we enable interoperability between data from the different networks. The second advantage is that this design is extensible. It's easy to extend the domain ontologies or to add entirely new domains without disturbing the business logic of the rest of the digital twin that is defined in terms of that higher level ontology. In addition to exploring the asset data, the visualization allows the exploration of how the assets respond to different flood scenarios. And we're going to look at an example of a simulation of a one in 100 year storm under worst case climate projections for the year 2070. The flood simulation outputs data, in this case for every hour of the storm, albeit conveniently denominated in seconds. And I'm going to pick the most interesting time point. You should now be able to see the water depth on the map behind the assets. So the light blue areas represent shallow water, the darker blue areas represent deeper water. You will also see that there are red rings around many of the assets. These indicate that these assets have experienced some sort of problem, some sort of failure. And we can select an asset to find out more about it and interrogate the digital twin to find out what's going on. So you'll see I've now selected the asset next to my mouse pointer. And the sidebar brings up metadata about the asset. In this case, we can see that it is a secondary substation. And we can see its name, its ID, its location, and a criticality score. The criticality score is a first attempt to understand the relative importance of each asset. 
in the current digital twin, we calculate it by counting the direct and indirect connections of each asset. So the criticality score for the current asset is broadly proportional to the number of things that would have a problem if this secondary substation failed. And in the future, we would hope to embellish the visualization so that you could visually see the level of criticality on the map. The sidebar also shows information about the operational state of the asset. In this case, we can see that the power state is false. This means that the asset is no longer supplied with mains power. However, we can also see that the current water depth appears to be negligible. We can interrogate the digital twin a bit further to look at the time history of the flood to find out what's going on. We're now seeing a chart of the power state of the asset as a function of time throughout the storm. And we can see that the power state is initially true. So the asset still has power up until roughly the current time point in the storm, at which point we lose power. However, if we now look at the flood depth as a function of time, although we can see the flood depth increasing in the middle of the storm, if you're able to read the vertical axis on this plot, you will see that the maximum flood depth is just about a fifth of a millimeter. So the asset barely gets its feet wet. There's clearly something else going on. In order to get to the bottom of this, we can interrogate the connections to and from the asset. In this case, we can see that the secondary substation is able to be supplied by two primary substations, one at the bottom of the screen, bottom left of the screen, one at the top left of the screen. So it's apparent that there's some resilience in the design of this synthetic data network. However, when we interrogate each of these primary substations, we can see that both are substantially underwater. This first one has a water depth of over a meter at the current time point. The second one has a water depth of well over half a meter. So both are substantially underwater. This causes both of these primary substations to fail. And it's this that is responsible for the loss of power at the original secondary substation that we clicked on. So going back to this original secondary substation, we can see that it also supplies power to two water sites and one telephone exchange, both of which also lose power and therefore also fail. This is an example of the failures that we see crossing between the networks and propagating outside just the area that gets wet. The digital twin is also able to query data from other knowledge graphs, such that this data could eventually be used to extend the capabilities of the analyses in the digital twin. And I'm going to show two examples of this. Both are based on querying data from the World Avatar Knowledge Graph, which has been developed based on the work of Professor Marcus Kraft as part of an ongoing collaboration between CMCL Innovations, the University of Cambridge, and Cambridge Cares, the university's research center in Singapore. And many of the ideas from this research have informed the design of the Credo Digital Twin. In the first example, we can see here the inclusion of open data from environment agency sensors. These sensors report live streams of information about river levels. And clicking on one of the sensors allows you to see the time history of the river level data. In this case, the chart shows six hours of data for a tidal river uh, at the tail end of Storm Franklin, midway through February. 
This demonstrates the possibility of how the digital twin might be extended to include information to support operational decision-making. In the second example, you can see that we are also able to retrieve building data. This is open data from Ordnance Survey. And the buildings on the visualization are color coded according to their use. So you can see here some green buildings with educational usage. You can see at the top of the screen a large red building, which is in fact a hospital. In the future, the digital twin might be extended to describe the supply of services to these and to other buildings, such that this could be included, for example, in the calculation of the criticality scores. So for example, you would be able to weight the criticality according to whether an asset supplied hospitals or operating theatres or other critical infrastructure. There are many other ways in which we think the digital twin could also be extended in the future. For example, it could be updated to include the power connections to a mobile mass such as this one and to describe the mobile signal strength as a function of area around each mast. It could also be extended to include a more detailed description of the assets. For example, the description of the connectivity could be extended to include the locations of the wooden pylons that you typically see snapped in half in news reports about storm damage. The information about the assets could also be extended to include data about the availability of backup power from batteries and generators, and the amount of fuel available for the generators, and work to extend the failure models to include these types of considerations has already been started. All of these things are likely to improve the ability of the digital twin to assess the resilience of the network. I hope this has given you a flavor of what the project team has been able to achieve over the last few months and how sharing data and connected digital twins might help us to understand systems better and intervene more effectively. Thank you for listening.